Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on statistical inference. All right, so statistical inference is conclusions that are reached based on the basis of evidence and reasoning. This evidence usually is in the form of data. And we'll be particularly interested in two aspects of inference. The first here is causal inference. That is, whether we can make a statement about one variable, often called the treatment, causing a change in another variable called the response. The other issue we'll be interested in is whether we can generalize the statement we're making to a bigger population, or if we have to restrict ourselves to making statements about the population that we actually have in our study. All right, so the two key pieces uh, that are incorporated here that affect whether you can make causal inference and inference to populations is whether your uh, data are coming from an observational study versus a randomized experiment and whether your individuals in that study were randomly selected from the population or not. So the difference between an observational study and a randomized experiment is that in the latter, the randomized experiment, the treatment has been randomly assigned to an individual. The difference between a random selection and non-random selection is just that, is that the individuals in the study were randomly selected from the population. And the reason these are important is whether you can make causal statements and whether you can make broader statements about the population. And so basically the idea is that in randomly selecting individuals from the population, that allows you to turn around and make inferential statements about that population and not just about the individuals in your study. The other aspect is that if you have a randomized experiment, that is you've randomly assigned treatments to experimental units, we can now make causal statements about that treatment causing a change in the response that we see. Whereas if we only had an observational study, we could not make those statements. All right, so I'm gonna say exactly the same thing, but now in a picture. So this picture is going to depict the four different scenarios I just described. We're in a particular scenario. Here we have a box. That box is gonna be the population that's actually under study, right? There could be individuals that are outside of this population, but we might restrict ourselves to this particular population. And in an observational study with non-random selection, the observational study part is that treatments were not randomly, aside by, randomly assigned by the investigator, and that's typified by the blue and the red dots just being whatever they are. Right? It was outside the researcher's control, so each experimental unit, each dot in the study, has whichever treatment it has. On the opposite side of things, this ellipse right here are going to be the individuals that are selected from the population for the purpose of the study. And these individuals here were not randomly selected. Right? This might have been a haphazard selection or it might have been a convenient sample. But in any case, the individuals were not randomly selected from the population. Right? Again, in this scenario, we cannot make causal statements and we cannot make any inference to the broader population that's in this box. If we have at least made the selection of individuals randomly, we're now in this scenario. So again, we're still in the observational study, so the treatments, that is the colors, were assigned to the experimental units without the control and the randomization from the investigator. But at least now we've randomly selected, in this case, these four individuals from the population. And whatever inferential statements we can make from that study are now generalizable to the whole population. On the opposite side of things, if we did not randomly select individuals, right, we just had a convenient sample, let's say, of individuals right here, but we were able to randomly assign the treatment to the experimental units. We've randomly assigned the blue color to these two and the red color to those two. We can now make causal statements about the relationship between that treatment, in this case the color, and whatever response that it is that we're measuring. If we have the best of both worlds, we have a randomized experiment and random selection of individuals from the population, as depicted in the bottom right corner, we now are able to make causal statements about the treatment affecting a response, as well as generalize that to the whole population of individuals in the box. All right, so here's a few examples to try to cement these ideas. As we go through these examples, you should be thinking to yourself, what's the treatment, what's the response? and whether that treatment was randomly assigned or not. 
and then whether the individuals in the study were randomly selected from some bigger population. For the purpose of this slide, I'm going to be thinking about the population as being all Iowa State University students. All right, so the first question is, all right, we're going to compare heights, that's the response, between male and female students, that's the treatment, in this class. So we're going to take the heights of everybody in this class and say whether they're male or female and ask questions about the relationship between being male or being female and the heights. So obviously the students in this uh, study were not randomly selected from the general population of Iowa State students and also the treatment, male and female, were not randomly assigned to individuals. But if I take all the students in this class and I randomly assign you to a uh, time slot for lab, we're not actually doing this, but if I had two different versions of lab and I randomly assigned you to the 2 o'clock version versus the 3 o'clock version and then say I looked at your midterm grades, well now I can make some causal statement because I've randomly assigned you to the lab, but I cannot infer this to any larger population because I have not randomly selected you. On the opposite side, if I randomly selected Iowa State students and I put them into two different groups, we'll call these the treatment groups, those who have a GPA above 3 and those who have a GPA below 3, and then I looked at the response being the number of Facebook friends that each individual has. Well now I've randomly selected individuals from the population so I can generalize to the whole Iowa State student body population, uh, but I've not randomly selected the treatment, that is the GPA being above or below 3, to individuals. So I cannot make any causal statement about the link between GPA and number of Facebook friends. If instead I randomly select individual students from Iowa State and then I also randomly assign them to one of two groups. Here's a group that's allowed to use Facebook and here's a different group that's not allowed to use Facebook. And I measure their GPA at the end of the year. Well now I can make some causal statements about whether being allowed access to Facebook or not has any impact on the average GPA. And I can also generalize this statement to the entirety of the student population at Iowa State. I cannot, however, generalize this to a broader population, say of all college or all graduate students in the country, because I've only randomly selected individuals on campus at Iowa State. All right, so two key points, that if you have randomly assigned the treatment, then you can make causal statements about its impact on the response. And if you've randomly selected individuals from the population, you can make inferential statements about the entire population based on your study.